I'm going to talk to you about my time with John Maxwell. So for those of you that don't know, uh, for the past couple of years, I've been going up to the mountains of Highland with uh, 10 other couples and getting to spend 72 hours with John Maxwell and his CEO, Mark Cole. Uh, and normally they bring in a special speaker as well. And it's just a great time to uh, basically sit at the foot of the master of leadership. And, and so today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go over some of the things that we discussed about leadership in my time with John. And um, guys, this is one of those, those moments that's so special for me. Uh, the way that I explained it to John is whenever you hear John teach, uh, sometimes he, he mentions his time sitting at the foot of John Wooden once a year and, and just pouring into John and learning all of the things that he did as an amazing coach and leader and, and person developer. And, and so I told John, I go, the time that I get to spend with you these 72 hours, because I get pretty much 15 hours of uninterrupted time with John. I'm, I'm with him for five hours a day. And I just get to sit there and, you know, update him with how things are going, uh, ask him questions. He gets to update me with things that he's going through, the things that he's learning and the, the new things that he's working on. And, and so today I wanted to share some of those lessons that I learned. And I told him, I go, John, this is this time with you. I equivalent to the time that you spent and you hold so dear with John Wooden. So the questions that we kind of were going over and, and one of the books that he gave me while we we're there is he came out with one of these uh, little mini books he, he has these out and they're out in airports all the time. And, and this one is called Leading Through Tough Times because he was, he was really interested to find out, you know, how Stephanie and I have been leading through the exit uh, of this last crisis, this, this last change in time where leadership seems to be fleeting. He said, where we're at right now in a time in not just our country, but in the world is we're in a leadership vacuum. Uh, the, the chapter in here that he, he talked about a lot was uh, the advantages of adversity. And he said one of the disadvantages of adversity is it causes a leadership vacuum. And why it causes that is because of the fact that adversity separates the true leaders from the pretenders. See, everybody talks about leadership during the good times, and everybody's a leader during the good time. But where you find out where the true leaders lie is when adversity hits. Because when adversity hits, all of a sudden, it turns into leadership crickets. You know, the people that were talking about leadership that were not actually showing it kind of disappear. And he said, so what happens is you get to see who the true leaders are during a crisis, as well as after the crisis. So after the crisis, it's important for leaders to cast vision. He said, most of the time that you spend during the crisis is, is casting vision, casting vision, casting vision, casting vision. He said, it's even more important afterwards. But he said, afterwards, there's a specific step that most people miss out on. And he said, that's asking for a commitment. You know, who's in, who's out? It's the separator. You, you sift the people that are truly in versus the people that are just kind of in. And he said, the reason why that's important is because you're developing your foundation for the next round. You're developing your group, your team, your core group of people to go through the next wave before inevitably the next crisis hits. Because he said, it's not if another crisis will come. He goes, it's when and how stable will your team be and the group of leaders that you're around when that comes. He said, it's also important because you have to ask people to put skin in the game. When people put skin in the game, they're going to be able to look back and go, hey, I've committed to this. Now I've put some time and value into this. I'm more likely to stay the course and work towards the goal versus abandoning it and going to something else. He said, one of the important things about that is that when you get a commitment from people, now you have a common goal and a common theme to focus on. So what we want to talk about is, you know, casting the vision, taking action by asking for a commitment, and then following up with those. Um, we talked on our, our, our team training last night about 
the fact that we always talk about the the how and the and the what and the things and the stuff. And John said, you know, tips and tricks work great. And tips and tricks are the majority of the things that the people that are the pretender leaders tend to teach because they rely on tips and tricks where true leaders teach values so that those things that continue to go through time, they don't change. Values don't change. When you have your values right and your core beliefs, you have a direction that you're going. So principles and values are the things that true leaders teach. Tips and tricks are the things that are taught for a moment in time that may work during the time that they're being taught, but they don't stand the test of time. Now, with our business, we talk about it all the time. You know, the things that we need to do to do the business, and that's what everybody comes seeking for. But also the most important thing, and we talk about this a lot, is the why. Why are you doing this? And, and Simon Sinek even created the whole book starts with why. And the reason why, pun intended, is because when you understand that and you know that reason, you are more likely to stick to your goals and push through adversity. Um, the one thing that he got is here, it says, how, how do you get to that point where the why is big enough? And we talk about it quite a bit is you have to find the why that makes you cry. He said, this is the question that you should ask yourself and ask your team. Do you even know what you want? And is it enough to keep you in the game when you're down in points? So guys, when you have everything stacked against you and you're in the fourth quarter and there's two minutes left and you're down by four points, is that enough to keep you in the game to push to try and get that win? And also, is that why enough, is the reason why you're in this enough that if you lose by two points, you get back up and you start training for the next game? The other thing that we talked about was, you know, what is your personal definition of success? Guys, this is a very important thing for you to define because once you define it, you have the ability to start going for it. And, and everyone's definition of success is different. You know, one person's definition of success is getting all the way through the ranks and getting to, you know, double ambassador, black diamond. Another person's definition of success may be just that $500 a month to pay for the things that they need in order to survive. You know, when Stephanie and I got started, that was exactly where we were. We just needed that extra $1,000 a month in order to not lose our house when we were losing everything. And then your definition of success has the ability to mold and change. So it's not something that's just finite and it's just there in that small period. It will grow and change with you. Along with that, he said, don't fall in love with your first plan because it could ruin the rest of your course. So when, when you're thinking about your definition of success, make sure that it's moldable. Because the first thing that you hold on to, if, if that's the, the one place that you stop at and God has so much more in line for you, but you can't get past the first definition of success that you had, you're missing out on all of the things that God has available for you. So make sure that you don't just fall in love with your first plan so much that it distracts you from moving forward. Uh, John says all the, all the time that best is the enemy of better. And success is the enemy of future success. So one thing that I want you to grab hold of today is look at what you're doing, assign a level of success to it and strive towards that, but also have an additional level. I mean, we used to talk about 10-year plans, five-year plans, three-year plans. And, and now it seems in today's society, everybody has like three-minute plans. You know, we, we can't watch a three-minute video so we have to watch it in 30 second chunks. So make sure that you have something that's out there long enough that it causes you to be able to strive and work towards something amazing. He also said, when you are increasing your vision and you're increasing the vision of people around there, you need to kind of develop a statement that goes towards the things that you're thinking. And so 
I had mine written down. Let me find it for you really quick. And it, it's almost like your, your leadership motto. When, when, you, when you peel back all the layers and you, you find out what's important in your life and what you want to be known for, create a leadership mission statement. And, and mine's changed throughout the years as I learn more and grow more. So again, it's something that grows with you. And, and the one that I had written down after this conversation was, my intention is to serve people and to help them lead a better life and become the best versions of themselves they can be. Now, that didn't have a lot to do with me. And the reason why is because I know in order to fulfill that mission, I automatically have to become better. I have to grow because I can't help more people if I don't have anything to learn and offer and teach people. So ultimately, my vision of helping other people is helping me because I have to consistently be able to grow to be able to learn and help more people. So take the time this week to sit down and write a leadership vision for you. What do you want to be known for when it comes to helping other people? Then the next part was, um, we were talking about how to grow things exponentially. You know, we've, we've gone through a, a, a time of crisis where, you know, things may not have grown, things may have shrunk because of the way that society has changed and the way that people are thinking and the way that people are doing things. Now we're getting back to a level of pace where people are able to take what we just went through and they've learned how to adjust and move forward from it. And he said, in order to increase your standard of living from today, you need to learn how to increase your standard of giving. And this comes back to the principle of giver's gain. He said, you have to understand that one, you can't outgive the person who created everything. And God is looking for people who are willing to give of their time, talent, money, energy to other people. And so when he finds those people that are a vessel for his work, he continues to pour in and through them. So in order to increase your standard of living, start increasing your standard of giving. And one of the things that that does is that helps you fill your significance bucket. Now, we've got all these different buckets that we pour our time and energy into. And the one that always seems to be the most empty is the significance bucket. And the reason why is because when people are going and, and striving for success, they're pouring everything into that success bucket. And the thing is, is when they're pouring everything into the success bucket, they end up feeling empty over here in the significance. They, have you ever seen the people that are, you know, multi, multi-millionaires and billionaires who have emotional problems and they just don't seem happy and they just don't seem like something's ever enough. It's because they poured everything into the success bucket while leaving their significance bucket dry. Now, the great thing about that is you can choose to change that at any time. You can still go 110% over here, but you can still add significance by marrying the two together. And that's why I love the business that we're in is because the business that we're in combines success and significance. That's why John says he loves network marketing. He said network marketing as an industry is designed of, I can only become successful if I help you become successful. The more successful you become, the more successful I become. And in that comes significance. I get the greatest return and the greatest joy in my life seeing you become successful and seeing your family change. And the reason why is because the more people that we can help, the more lives that we can change, the more our life change. And that's why it's the giver's gain mentality. The more that you give, the more that you gain. <clears throat> so today I'd say something like this, take the focus off of what you want and start focusing on the things that your team wants and watch how what you want automatically returns. Oh man. I, I just wish you guys could just get a minute of the, the time that I got because the, the thing that we talked about was the power in proximity. Guys, the reason why events and getting around people is so important is because I can only convey so much through this Zoom. I mean, I can shake the screen, I can yell, I can be excited over here, and, and you may feel a little bit of it, 
But when you get in proximity to other people and you experience the same thing, corporate getting together, getting together in groups, there's power in that because you're able to transfer energy. The excitement, the emotion, the, the joy, the, the desire of a group of people lasts long after the event. I mean, we're sitting here five days after the event, and I'm still so excited to share the things that I learned, where you watch something on Zoom or you listen to a podcast, you may be excited about it for a second and you may share it with a couple of people. But when you are able to collectively go through something together, it solidifies the things that you've gone through and it creates memorable experiences for the people that you're with, you know, and then in those things, you create new connections. You will meet people that you may have never met. Some people meet their greatest friends who are not in their downline. They may be in a cross line through going to an event and getting together and rallying around a common cause. Then the next thing that we, we talked about was um, everyone's always striving for something. And when they look at leaders, most people aren't striving to be a leader. They are striving to get what the leader has. You know, they see leadership as preferential treatment. They see leadership based on the things that the leader has and does and gets to do. But they don't understand the amount of work and the time it takes for that leader to get those things. So when you start doing the things that a leader does, you will start having what a leader has. So Today, you can start doing the work to get the reward later that people will want that you have. You know, that, that's one of the things we, we talk about all the time is if you think about it, you see the things that we have now, but you missed the 12 years of hard work that it took to get to today. You're seeing our chapter 13 right now but you didn't see our chapters one through three where we were absolutely horrible at everything that we did. And yet through the grace of God, we were still able to continue to go through where we're going to get to where we are today. So I wanna encourage you with that is start doing the things today that will produce the results of what you want in the future. And then when you get there, you'll understand the, the weight that comes with having that responsibility of showing, teaching, and helping others to get the rewards that you have. And the rewards are absolutely worth it. But the most rewarding thing is the ability to pour on others and see their lives changed. He said, one thing that, that you need to focus on daily is who is that one person that you can intentionally speak life into? And guys, that's what I, that's what I love about this podcast and the, the Zoom is that I'm able to impact more than just one person a day. You know, when John talks about why he started writing books, and it was because his mentor told him that through books, he was able to touch more people and then touch people throughout his lifetime and even beyond his lifetime than he would just being able to personally mentor people. So that's what actually started John on writing his first book is he wanted to be able to impact the most people that he could. So that was the medium from which he did it. And today, you know, we have amazing options like podcasts, YouTube, Zoom, the, the ability to reach more people than ever before with a message of hope and the fact that it's something available to everyone to listen to. So if I could ask anything is, for you to take time to share the things that you're learning with those around you so that you can have the ability to impact those in your life. So I wanted to finish this with the one thought that your leadership matters. You know, the question that Stephanie asked John at dinner was, you know, everybody has a different definition of leadership and we know what yours is, John, but has that changed in this current climate? And so for those of you that don't know, John's definition of leadership has always been leadership is influence. And he said he probably has to go back through and add a little bit to that. And the reason why is because everybody now is an influencer, but not anybody or everybody is a leader. 
So now the thought process of influencing has changed because influencing has now just become a marketing term. It has gone the way of being so common that people don't understand what it truly is and how it relates to leadership. So when John talks about leadership now, he said leadership is influence in the realm of a positive pouring into somebody else's life that will draw them from a place that they are today to a new greater place that they would not have otherwise gotten to without your direction. So guys, today, focus on creating a type of leadership that allows you to help somebody that starts from here and bring them to a new greater place, positively, ethically, and morally right to a place where they couldn't have gone if they had not met you so that you can have the positive impact in the life that they so greatly need. Guys, I hope this helped. I know that there's a ton of information there. Make sure you go back and re-listen to this and share it with somebody because these leadership principles and these thoughts have profounded impact on me and I hope they did on you. So guys, go out and make it an amazing week and I hope your day is as awesome as you are. We'll see you again soon.